urgent public importance. That is rule four. So the, the issue is the urgent need for a review of Nigerian foreign policy towards liberating the black man from racial oppression and discrimination across the world. So uh, I want this motion to be taken as urgent and all our relevant rules to be suspended. So enable me to present this motion now, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The House recalled that Nigeria attained independence in October 1960 after colonial rule that spanned over a century and only after a very bitter struggle lasting decades. Equally recalled, this rule was made possible by the contribution of nationally robust modern organization that Dr. Anansi has displayed in the Ahmed Bello and Chief of Affairs Governor, among others, as well as on some the Aba Women Warriors of 1929. Further recalled that the dehumanization of which Nigerian people were subjected left an indelible yearning to confront denial, discrimination, oppression of any form, but particularly on account of the color of your skin. The House is aware that for the affirmation reason, attainment of independence, Africa became the centerpiece of Nigerian foreign policy. Equally aware that the apartheid policy in South Africa was the most compelling instance of racism of its time, and in spite of our infancy as a sovereign state, the Prime Minister, Sir Abu, Sir Abu Bakr Sabah directed that a letter referenced PPS 27, dated 4 April 1961, be written to African National Congress, assuring it that on this part, the battle against apartheid has just begun. And so began the dismantling of apartheid after more than 100 years of its reign in South Africa. The House notes that, true to its word, Nigeria lobbied for the expulsion of South Africa from Commonwealth of Nations in 1961, boycotted and organized the boy boycotted and organized the boycott of many sovereign states of the Montreal Olympics in 1976 and the Edmonton Commonwealth Games in 1979 in protest against the deprived policy of apartheid. Now, James speak that back those days on account of our corporate and collective integrity that culminated in cross-border dignity, Nigeria did not slumber. Nigeria did not speak from both sides of her mouth. Nigeria roared and never whimpered in the community of sovereign states, where the inalienable rights of a racial kind were in issue. Bearing in mind that Nigerian rights rose to sign every human rights treaty of the time, like the International Covenant of Civil and Political Rights in 1966, that exposed equality and prohibited discrimination on account of race. Cognizant that, as an attestation of this long held values of human rights, racial justice, equity, and equality as well as African unity, our constitution proclaims our dedication dedicated to the promotion of inter-African solidarity as the 1979 constitution did as well as to the promotion of African integration and support for African unity and to mutual respect among all nations and elimination of discrimination in all its manifestations as the 1979 constitution did. Concern that there is the continuing and increasing dehumanization of Nigerians, African, and black people across the world, particularly in the United States, Europe, and Asia, and that political independence and civil rights legislation do not mean Uhuru yet for the black people who continue to live in bondage. 
distress that daily reports are coming in of the endless dehumanization of black people across the world, including being indiscriminately shot, dismembered, maimed, and places like the United States by none other than agents of state, being mauled, maimed, and lynched by dogs, being set upon them by private individuals and agents of state in Asia, particularly in China, being subjected to monkey charts in stadia, in other arena around Europe, humiliations, dehumanization, and killings that neither time, money, nor material can produce. Further distress that this incessant dehumanization of black people across the world has compelled the helpless black communities to start looking inwards towards resolving their challenges. And this has led to the groundbreaking movement of Black, Life, black Lives Matter in the United States and with the recent police killing of the black man, Mr. George Floyd, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and the resultant protest, the Black Lives Matter protests are slowly subsiding, even if hindered by COVID-19 pandemic across the globe. Mindful that one in four of every black man in the world one is in Nigeria. I'm mindful of our for, for, for stated history of intense agitation against apartheid and injustice in which ours and our parents, uncles, brothers, and resources were invested. Conscious that foreign policy is dynamic and that time has come to redirect Nigerian foreign policy towards its original goals of Afrocentrism, as well as justice for all, particularly all black people. Further conscious that in the aftermath of the Nazi, okay, let me, okay, determined that, de, determined that the time has come to put an end to the culture of discrimination, annihilation, genocide, and racial cleansing being perpetrated against Nigerians, Africans, and black people all over the world, that the black race must cure the same level of protection as the Jews' president. Uh, in the example, Nigeria must once again take the lead towards this objective if external shame is to be avoided. Uh, finally, the House resolved to mandate the committees on foreign affairs and diaspora to collaborate between them to organize the conference of local and international stakeholders towards fashioning comprehensive approaches to the first three challenges of discrimination annihilation, genocide, and racial cleansing being perpetrated against Nigerians, Africans, and the black people all over the world. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Nigeria was able to lead other African countries to fight colonialism and bring an end to apartheid. It was at the instance of Nigeria that United Nations Anti-Apartheid Committee was established and we fought apartheid to stand still. We led other countries to boycott Montreal Olympics, Edmonton Commonwealth Games in 1976 and 1979. Uh, during the president's uh, the head of state, uh, General Obasa in Jordan, Nigeria nationalized all companies that have link with apartheid South Africa. For instance, uh, Bankless Bank was nationalized and changed to Union Bank. Standard Bank was changed to First Bank, British Petroleum to African Petroleum. And we are able to establish South African Relief Fund of which we are contributing every year $5 million to uh, both African Congress and Pan African Congress of Azania. So now that there is no more appetite in Nigeria or in Africa, the new focus now 
is black man is being hunted all over the world. Nigeria has to take a stand on this very issue so that it will be uh, to our own by the use of uh, African Union, the use of uh, PAP and other multi-agency group to fight apartheid in, its own, in all of, uh, racism in all its ramifications. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, that's why we are saying that Nigeria should now refocus or to redirect our foreign policy interest to reflect the interest of black men. Because for every four black men in the world, one is a Nigerian. So we have to rise up. If we don't do this struggle, no over, nobody will do it for us. And we said this exactly what's happened to the Jews after the Holocaust and the World War II. So it has become uh, a criminal offense in many jurisdictions to even deny Holocaust, top less of uh, anti-Semitism. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Those in favor, please say aye. Those against me, say nay. The eyes are big.